Hi everybody, this is Matt Kelly from, well, depending on what show you're subscribed to, I'm either producer Matt uh, of One Hit Thunder and my favorite episode of and the Roaring Twenties and the Disneydo podcasts, or I am the co-host of Horror Movie Night, or I'm just that guy that Jonathan London makes fun of all the time on Geekscape. Anyway, I am very excited to talk about the newest show coming to the Geekscape Network on Monday. That's going to be tomorrow night, December the 23rd. It's a show that I am co-hosting with my good friend Dylan, and it's called Christmas 365. Uh, with a lot of the shows that we work on and produce here at Geekscape, there's always this little ping of pessimism that you can find in every single one of the episodes and I wanted to create a show that was just overly optimistic and wholesome with Christmas 365. So the focus of this show is that every week Dylan and I will discuss something that we love about Christmas. Now the first episode is just the two of us but we've already recorded a ton of episodes with a bunch of great guests that come on and tell us their favorite thing about Christmas. I wanted to drop the first 10 minutes of our first episode here as a free sneak peek to everybody. Give it a listen and if you dig it we are on every podcasting app out there so go and subscribe and check out Christmas 365. Uh, it's been a rough year for all of us, and I just thought it was time for just a good, upbeat, optimistic podcast. I hope you guys enjoy it. holidays everybody this is the first episode of the newest show that i'm producing because god knows i don't have enough talking about christmas but there's only one person on this planet that i could ever have as a co-host on a show talking about christmas and it is my good buddy dylan christmas, christmas! Oh, i cannot wait to talk about christmas and santa and cookies and gingerbread and, and carols oh and carols <laughs> And the smell of sweet pine. Ah, I'm so excited. It's going to be a good time. And we're starting off with something a little different. So obviously, we're going to have different people on the show. Uh, every once in a while, we'll do episodes that are just Dylan and I. But we will have guests coming on talking about their favorite Christmas specials or favorite Christmas memories. Or maybe we'll even have an interview with Santa Claus or anything that you can think of. But last year, I had my wisdom teeth pulled. And when it came time for me to finally get my wisdom teeth out, they said, when do you want to do this? And I said, I want some time in December, because while I'm forced to lay on a couch for three to five days, I want to watch as many Christmas specials as I can. So I literally had stacks of DVDs and I was bouncing between the stuff that I owned and like the stuff that was streaming on Netflix that I had just never gotten around to. And I put on Let It Snow one night and just closed my eyes. I was like, this looks dumb. I'll just put it on. I'll close my eyes. I'll just listen to the movie until I fall asleep because I had like a little bit of a headache going on at that point. And all of a sudden, the dialogue started to pull me in. And I, I suddenly wasn't tired anymore. And I was very focused in seeing where this movie went. And all of a sudden, I'm laughing. All of a sudden, I'm searching out the songs that are in the movie so I can listen to them all the time. And then next thing I know, I watched this movie four times last year and I couldn't get anyone to talk to me about it because no one seemed to know it existed. So I knew the first episode of this podcast, since historically the first episode of podcasts are always going to be the most listened to one that I needed to use this time to let people know about this movie. And I was so thrilled to find out that Dylan had also not seen this movie. So this is the fifth time I've watched it. The first time for Dylan. D 
Dylan, I've been following your posts on social media about this. Let's talk about how much you loved Let It Snow. I mean, so my experience with this movie is just as you described. I've never heard of this movie until you um, you had linked me to it. And my thought was, is this movie apparently came out last year, 2019. And I, w- I wasn't even sure that Netflix had even promoted it because I had, again, never heard of this movie, never seen it in my life. Honestly, you sent me the link to it and I'm looking at the poster and I'm like, this is going to be bad. I'm like, does Matt <laughs> like this ironically or, or, or how is this? gonna go because i mean uh we we you host the horror movie night podcast i'm huge into horror i work with monster mania and such so i mean you and i have some weird taste in movies and things that we would call uh good and enjoyable but i'm sitting there last night watching this and i'm just completely enthralled by it i mean from from the cast to the dialogue like I, i posted it on facebook this cheesy teen on ensemble nonsense is 100 percent. sorry for lack of a better term my shit yeah like- <laughs> no this this movie is the way that i sell it to people is that the first hour of the movie is christmas empire records and then the last 30 minutes is christmas can hardly wait yes and- they're they're two of the best 90s teen flicks and that's like at its heart and soul if you remove the cast because obviously the cast is a lot of fresh faces if you had just shown me this movie and said that it was some forgotten 90s christmas gem i would have believed you because the pacing the music everything about it is so distinctly timeless and that's what i re- like most of the music is like 70s and 80s deep cuts like it's not super ingrained in yo it's 2019 and i absolutely love this movie this is not going to be the first time i mean this is the first time that i've watched it in 2020 it's certainly not going to be the last time i watch it in 2020 i will probably watch this movie four more times before the holiday is over because i just i love it i'm bummed that this every once in a while netflix will release a dvd of like one of their original movies and i'm bummed at the concept that that'll probably never happen with this movie because i want to digest everything i want the commentary tracks i want (laughs) like whatever bonus features they can give me for this movie i want it so bad this movie is so good. I mean, never say never. I mean, it came out on Netflix last year, the 2020 season. But no one fucking knows it. I, I know, but oh, okay. But I went to our local Walmart and I'm looking at the DVD selection and it's it's just filled with Netflix originals and Shutter originals that I had no idea existed that look absolutely terrible. So, I mean, I'm not counting this out. For a DVD release. I've seen worse movies get a physical release. Now I will say. I can't guarantee you're going to get. A a DVD or or Blu-ray. Chock full of extras. (laughs) (laughs) Well and apparently. This is based on a young adult novel. And I've seen the young adult novel. At Walmart before. So I think this year. I am going to purchase that book. And also read it. Dude inject that directly into my veins. Like I want that so bad. There's not a bad thing about this movie. Like having watched as many times as I have, it is if you are someone who loves teen flicks, like this is the ultimate Christmas teen flick. So I want to talk to you about your favorite moments, Uh, or at least let's start. Let's break down the different characters because we're we're following like seven to eight characters throughout the entire movie. But they're all like their own separate storylines. So like the thing that that caught my eye and I was texting you while I was watching it is this cast. It is a cast full of fresh faces. But at the same time, this is kind of the the who's who of of teen actors and actors in their early 20s. Now you have again, I could be totally saying this wrong, but uh, Kiernan Shipka. Uh, famous for her role as Sabrina in the chilling event- adventures of Sabrina. You have Shamik Moore, who was in one of my favorite movies of the past decade. Dope. Who else? You've got uh, Isabella Moner, who uh, played Dora in the uh, new Dora, the Explorer live action movie. Uh, and yeah. was also in Instant Family. The one guy who seemingly runs the waffle shop has been in a bunch of movies recently. Um, specifically, I remember him from Blockers. Is that the guy who's the one from um, 
Halloween, the yes, yes, Miles Miles Robbins. Yeah, yeah, he popped up. I was like, and he pops up like 45 minutes into the movie and i'm like what in the world is happening they literally like just ran the gauntlet and we haven't even mentioned uh jacob battle on ned from the new spider-man flicks he crushes it in this movie and then you've got you know some of the like i won't say bigger names but the the older cast members with you know joan kuzak being the voice that kind of connects all the stories together and then i can never pronounce her name properly but uh the actress who played janet on the good place even has a brief little cameo yes yes it's a perfect cast honestly it's a really good cast. So let's break down uh, the different characters. So one of the main stories, the story that I'm, I won't say it's the one I'm most invested in, but it's the one that hits the closest to home for me is the story of Tobin and Angie, also known as Duke, yes. which is your classic bread and butter teen flick story of male, female, best friends, hang out all the time. The guy is in love, but is afraid to say something because it'll break up the friendship. And the Duke is clearly also having those feelings. But since nothing's being said, they're not thinking anything of it. This one, what I love about this segment is that it introduces the character of JP. So Duke starts dating this guy, JP. And in every movie we've ever seen like this, JP ends up being a secret douchebag. And this movie doesn't do that. JP is like one of the best people in this entire movie. He's so nice. One of my favorite lines is they're in a car, like a, a chase, like a car chase. And they keep saying like, they keep calling the car a bitch. And all of a sudden he's in the backseat and he goes, I know you're talking about a car, but uh, I'm also a feminist. <laughs> it killed me. It killed me. Oh my God. So good. Oh, whoa. listening to the Geekscape Network. You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 